Well, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? Who knows? Nobody knows. That's the fun of it. But today I've had quite enough of playing with pastels and neutrals and pinks. I needed to go back to my soul. And play with colour. So, a continuation of my please put your confessional hat on because <sighs> Brexit broke my low by. This edition is the Painsomnia. Half past two in the morning purchase of some of the limited edition wet and wild stuff on Beauty Bay. Now I looked at these quads and a lot of people didn't like them. So I'd not bothered to buy them and then I got woken up at half past two in the morning with pain and well this happened. So if you want to see exactly how well these perform and what I think of them, my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I will have shown you this in the intro. This is, yes. Another instalment of Brexit broke my low buy. Uh, to summarise quickly, if you haven't seen the preceding episodes, uh, Brexit means that when it goes through, there's a likelihood that we're not going to be able to order in the UK from European uh, suppliers without paying tax on arrival. And Nikki Raven got me hooked on this particular mascara, which is the Catrice Cosmetics Glamondol Volume Mascara Waterproof. It's a bang on dupe for Benefits Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. So with my very, very weepy eyes, which is one of the side effects of fibro, it stays put. So I blame her uh, because I fell in love with that after she used it and recommended it. But the only place I could find it was a German supplier. <laughs> so I kind of validated it by saying, well, you know, one of those lasts me normally about three, four months. So if I order three more of those, that will do me for a year. That gives me a year either to find a suitable replacement that I can get in the UK or hopefully by then we'll be able to get this in the UK. Because Catrice, in essence, not all of their stuff comes over to the UK. We only get dribs and drabs and we never get the limited edition stuff, which is really annoying. Um... And of course I wasn't just going to order three mascaras, so I ordered three more of the mini brow pencils that I liked, that she recommended as well, and two palettes. And um, I picked up this mascara as well, this is Essence Maximum Definition Volume Mascara to try, because it was on special. So, yeah, but then that gave me the buying bug, so I bought stuff from Revolution. That was when I bought the unicorn palette. Uh, and then the next day, pain insomnia, forgotten that I was on a low buy. So at two o'clock in the morning, ended up buying this from Revolution and this from Wet n Wild, and getting the right colour number seven for uh, my foundation. But to be fair, this was from 15 quid down to a tenner, and I am going to use it also. Hmm. Uh, so, here. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and as, as well as this, I actually bought one of the lipsticks from the limited edition set as well. This is their... Um, doesn't say what the, the collection is. It just says that it's limited edition. Um... This is this is the quad called Bed of Roses, and if 
you open the pans, you, if you open it up, you can see the pans are actually uh, embossed to look like roses. And for some reason when I swatch it, normally I go one, two, three, four. Today I went one, two, four, three. Don't ask. Do not ask. I was obviously having a day of it. And then I got the matching one of the liquid cat suits. This is in shade Bud Romance. Um, but it reminds me very much of Jeffrey's Scorpio. And it has, I don't know if I can get this, so that it's, there you go, you can see it's got a rose on the lid. So, yeah, this is one of their liquid cat suits. And I've got one of their liquid cat suits. The first one of theirs I got was Nudie Patootie, which I love. And then when I got that mermaid set, when a friend of mine went to America and brought it back for me, the box set, I got the four from that, which were... Uh, Coral Crown, Siren's Jewel, Harbour of Crush, and Sea Seduction. So I know I like that formula, so I thought, oh, you know, if I'm getting this, I might as well get this as well. Mm. Even though I've got Jeffrey Scorpio. This is what happens when you have severe pain and you get woken up at half two in the morning with severe pain and you can't get back to sleep. So you think, what can I do that will cheer me up? I know, I'll go buy something. So, um, I'm going to put these swatches up on screen while I zoom you in. Uh, they don't have names, just, but as I said, I did go like that rather than like that this time. Uh, they actually swatched really well. And I will be very up close and personal when I come back. Okay. Right. Uh, my channel is aimed at all skill levels from beginner to expert. So I talk you through each step, step by step. I do both eyes on camera. And because of my chronic pain, I do blend quite slowly. So if I'm going too slow for you, by all means, speed me up. There's a speed widget on YouTube. Please feel free to use it. Don't moan at me that I'm going too slow for you. Just remember when you were a beginner and you couldn't go very quickly. Um, right, hello, I'm back. Now, when I look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner, so I don't have a hooded lid. If you don't see this, if part of this lid is covered completely by your static lid, you have either a full or a half hooded eye, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorial. Now what I've got is deep set eyes, which a lot of people think are hooded eyes. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that folds back in. So I do understand the issue that people with hooded lids have because I have the same issues. I get transference of shimmer up onto the top lid. I can't just do a nice, pretty, follow my eyeball to do a, a cut crease. Even when I use glitter glue, I always get a bare strip there, right across the, the bit. So, you know, I completely understand the issues you've got. You can still follow me. Get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, with your eye open. Just sketch where you need your crease to fall. So if you imagine, if, I could, if you couldn't see this part of my lid, it on this one to show you. I would come up to about here and come along. Okay, so you're creating the illusion of having a mobile lid or a visible mobile lid. Now, obviously, that will reduce the space between your crease and your brow. So just use a smaller blending brush because whatever size the head of the brush, that's how far it's going to blend out. So depending on the size brush you use, whatever size the head of the brush is that touches your skin, that's how far it will blend the colour out. Okay, so just use smaller brushes than I am if you do have a reduced lid area. Now, my face is washed, moisturised, primed, SPF, no SPF and then primed, get it the right way around, Ange. 
and on my lids I have used my Colourpop No Filter Concealer. Now this was Fair 5, but that's before they renumbered them, so I don't know what the heck it is now. Right, so I have not set my lid. Just to, don't know why I'm waving a brush at you like this, but I am. Okay, right, this is a Morphe M321, <laughs> which has got, apparently, there we go, a piece that was wanting to escape. And I'm going to go in with, which of those two are the darker? Do you know what? Although you'd think this is the darker one, I think this is actually going to come off darker on the lid. So I'm going to start with this one, I think. I'm not going to start with that one, or I'm not going to start with that one. Let's give it a blend on the back of my hand. Yeah, I'm going to start with the grey, shade number three, if we were going one, two, three, four. So I'm going to start with this one. And yes, when I dropped it, I managed to dig a nice chunk with my nail in that really pretty flower. <sighs> Pain. I just love it. Right, so I'm just going to dip into the pan. Not a huge amount of kick up in that pan, as you can see. Come on, focus, there we go. So, because I've not set it, I'm just going to tap, whoa, okay, tap this colour into place. And I'm initially following the socket of my skull. And you need to follow the line that you've put down if you've had to raise your crease. Wow. Wow. This has got some pigment, folks, hasn't it? The reason I keep relaxing my brows is because I still want this to appear just above. When I relax my... that's it. I just wanted to... I do that just to make sure that I'm getting the right sort of shape and I'm getting it high enough. So obviously I'm not blending, I'm just tapping this on at the moment because it's not a set base so you don't want to try and because it will go patchy. I'm just going to bring that down. Yep, okay, I like that. Now I'm going to very, very gently do some little circular blending all the way along what I've just put down to just try and soften the edge a bit so it's not quite as harsh again I'm not overly worried about getting it on my lid because I am going to probably going to cut my crease so Just really gentle. <clears throat> I'm holding the brush right at the end so I'm putting as little pressure on my skin as possible. I'm just doing really light circular buffing movements. It's gone a tad patchy just there. But as I said I'm going to be cutting my crease so I'm not particularly worried about that at the moment. I could sort it if I wanted to, but I don't need to. I'm probably going to do a full... Actually, no, I'm not going to do a full cut crease. I'm going to bring this down on the outside because it is such a lovely smoky grey. I had a lot of people saying they didn't actually like these. 
I now have the issue that I want to go and buy the other ones as well. Because quads are great for travelling with. They're so small. And yes, it does restrict the number of options you have, but that can be quite good, particularly if you're in a rush. Sometimes if you've got too much choice, you're like, oh, what am I going to do? Ooh, I do like that. Right. I'm now going to repeat exactly what I've just done over here. But obviously with this eye, because I'm blind in this eye, I can actually close it. Um, but I do have super deep creasing just here, as you can see, running vertically there. Um, and I normally have to um, have problems getting it to blend properly. I will show you what I mean in a minute. I do sometimes have to sort of like pull the lid out, which I hate doing because I hate stretching the skin on my eyelids at all. Because that's how they got damaged in the first place. I, you know, when I was five, six years old at the ophthalmic hospital, way back when, I um, pulled my eye around an awful lot. Uh, and I've noticed that I have got significantly more creasing on this lid. And this lid is much, much um, looser, um, you know, less less taut than the skin on this lid is. So blending is a lot more difficult because as you can see the skin on this eye moves around a lot more than the skin does on my other eyelid. And I do tend to find I get more fallout with this eye as well. Which is frustrating to say the least. But, you know, it was the 70s. Lucky I've still got an eyeball in there, I suppose. <laughs> Although, to be fair, you know, they, they tried their best at the ophthalmic. But, you know, these things happen. You just deal with it the best you can. Do just keep checking that the shapes are looking the same. Because obviously nobody's eyes are completely symmetrical. And you may find that to get the shapes to look the same, they actually have to be a bit different. I think I need to come in just a little bit more on this outer corner this side. This really has gone gothy, hasn't it? I am really liking it though. This takes me back to my late teens when I went through a phase of Black smoky eye for everything. Uh. Right. Believe it or not, this washcloth is clean. It's just really stained from when I've used pigments. So, because it is fresh out the washing machine this morning. I'm going to use this to clean the dark grey pigment off of this brush. How's your day been? Hope it's been a good one. Or if you're using me to ease you into the start of your day, good morning. I hope you're going to have a good day. Right. That's got all the pigment off the brush. Now I'm going to go in with this shade. Using exactly the same brush. This side has got a, a lot more kick up. 
than the first one did as you can hope you can see there look what I'm going to do slightly overlapping the grey I'm going to pop this again by tapping because we're still on an unset base I'm just tap 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 to lay the pigment down before I even think about trying to blend it Now I understand this may not be to everybody's taste, but I've had a few days where I've done neutral looks, and I've done pastel looks, and I've done pink looks, and I feel the need of getting back to something a little more me. Now I do struggle here with um, pigment laying down because I've got quite deep creasing here which you can probably that, that's probably just 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 you know demonstrated it quite nicely for you so I'm just gonna again very lightly blend this out leaving sort of three four mils below my brow here just so that it's noticeable when I put the brow highlight on. Yeah, you see I've still got striping here, but I think I can get away with it because I'm going to be cutting the lid anyway, aren't I? Uh, I'm just going to grab this Morphe 562 that I used the other day. It's stained, it is clean, but it's stained because I used a pressed pigment with it. And I'm just going to use this to really buff over that shade I've just put down. To really help soften it and blend it in with the uh, deeper smoky grey down here. Now annoyingly it looks like it's getting a bit clumpy up there but I think that is just because of my creasing on my brow. This has just got a bit of micellar water on it by the way if you're wondering. Okay, that's looking a bit better now. See, in my mirror, it doesn't look patchy at all, but in my viewfinder here it does. That's why I'm just really going in and trying to soften the blend between those two colours. Oh yeah, this is definitely a me look. Um, if you don't want it quite this dark, I suggest you set your brow, set your um, concealer or whatever brow pri uh, lid primer you use um, and then sweep it on and blend rather than packing it on and then blending because obviously packing it on does make it more intense and using it on an unset base makes it more intense. But to be quite honest, I got a bit fed up of seeing me in pastel, neutral and pink. I wanted a little bit of a little bit of a gothic -y, oomphy kind of look. This is very 1990s angsty me. <laughs> I went through it quite a lot. I had some bad times in the 90s. Very bad times, to be honest. Home life was not great. Well, home life hadn't been great since about 1987 when my granddad died. But uh, got considerably worse as I got older. 
If you want a story time on that, you have to let me know in the comments box. Obviously, if there's no interest in listening to it, I'm not going to sit here and waffle just for the sake of it. So again, I'm going to go in with this smaller, what is this, 562 from Morphe, just to soften and sort of help these two to just to blend a little bit because this is slightly looser packed so it's great for smaller areas if you've if you've raised your, your um, crease up or for blending like I'm doing now because this is much more densely packed I mean it will blend but Obviously with it being more densely packed, it does blend in a slightly different way. And then this smaller brush does. Ooh, I like this. Yes! Look like I'm about to audition for the Queen of the Night, don't I? Or the Evil Witch. Which I have been called many times. Of course that W is interchangeable with a different letter there for that as well. I'm just cleaning the majority of the pigment off of the two brushes I've just used before I go in. And cut my crease as you can see these white brushes stain so damn quickly right as always to cut my crease I'm using uh, one of my acrylic nail art brushes this is brush number 12 which I believe is because it's 12 mils wide it comes down nice and flat which I like uh, I'm going to go in, actually no, I'm going to go in with the Revolution Conceal and Define in C0.5 Can you focus? Thank you so much Because this is just a little bit thicker than the Revolution, than the um, Colourpop one Not too much fallout, that's good mm -hmm. So, as ever, for those of you who have not seen me cut my crease before, I pack the concealer onto this brush and then quite roughly just bung it on the lid. Then open my eye and blink a few times and that transfers it up so that I can see exactly how high I need to go to cut my crease. So if you are worried about cutting your crease and you're never quite sure what shape you need to do, that works for everybody. But it is especially good if you are just starting to do this and you've got hooded lids and you're really not sure how high or what shape to cut your lid to. Uh, I'm just patting this concealer on I always do one eye at a time because I want it to stay as sticky as possible for when I lay the shimmers on top and I do a pretty rough edge to be honest and then just pat over with the back of the brush to just pick up mm -hmm. any excess, will you be quiet, any excess P 
pigment or concealer. I'm just going to try and sharpen that line up a little bit. Because the thing is, when you see me put pictures up on Instagram, unless it's got an obvious Snapchat filter on, like hearts or dog's ears or whatever, I have made no changes to them at all. So I don't use Facetune, I don't fix blemishes, I don't tidy lines up, I don't um, change skin texture or brighten things. Um, what you see is exactly what I've produced because I want my looks to be achievable. Right, just wiped the concealer off of that for the minute to keep it nice and clean and soft so that when we go in with um, colour on it, or well, when we go in with the concealer for this lid, it's not um, sticky and stiff from the previous lid. Right, I'm starting off with a little small brush like this. This is from the BH Smoke and Mirrors collection and it's brush number 10. See, I could if I wanted to go over this again and lighten it up, but I really don't mind that it's a little bit earthy. I'm quite happy with that actually. So I'm going to go in with the lightest of the two shimmers here. And I'm going to use these dry. I don't like using shimmers wet on a concealed base because I think it sort of like dilutes the concealer. It makes sense in my head, okay? I'm just going to press this into the concealer, which because we haven't set it is still really sticky. This is a very very soft packed pigment as you can see. So be very very gentle with it when you're using it. Right, now I'm going to grab this uh, Chic Pro, this is actually a spot concealer brush from Royal and Langnickel. I'm going to use this to fill in the majority of the lid. So I use the smaller brush for preciseness here. Once I've patted it on, I just sort of gently stroke across it like this to remove any loose pigment that could fall out during the day and ruin your look. Okay, nice, 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 Rodney, nice. I'm just going to clean these two brushes off. Continuing with the Royal and Langnickel, I'm going to go into a slightly deeper shimmer. This is not as loosely packed at all. This is much firmer packed. There's little to no kick up in the pan at all. So watch this one because it could get hard pan on it. And I'm just going to pop this on the outer edge of the eye, or the concealer anyway. Just going to grab my little BH brush to do those edges. And then what I'm going to do, 
with this brush I'm going to put some of the deeper shimmer this side and the lighter shimmer on the other side and I'm going to drag the deeper shimmer onto the lighter side and then flip it over and drag the lighter side onto the deeper side. You will get fallout when you do this but it is an important step because it just softens the blend between the two so you don't get a huge blunt stripe. Oh I like that. That is super pretty. So again I'm just cleaning the two brushes off because obviously I'm going to go into the light one when I start with the other eye. And we go back to cutting the other lid. This is what I was saying about you, I will always show you both eyes. I think the only film that I sped up was when I cut my crease. I did a, I did a negative wing and um, then went over the negative wing with liquid lipstick and I think I just sped up the bit with the liquid lipstick because the film was getting super long well, I know my films are quite long anyway but this was getting ridiculous so. but normally you will not see me speed anything up because the problem is if you see a tutorial that takes 20 minutes and you think, well, I'm a beginner, so I'll leave myself 30 minutes. And I can do that for a night out. And then all of a sudden you realise they've done one eye off camera. And they've sped up the blending and they've cut steps out. And you think, bloody hell. And it actually takes you three quarters of an hour to achieve. Straight away, you're running late for your night out. And if you're going out on a date, that's not good. To be honest, if you're just going out kicking with your mates, it's not good. Yes, I have many LGBTQIA plus friends. So, I have picked up some of their terminology. Apologies if that offends anybody. It's certainly not intended to. So, cut the crease to the shape you want, flip the brush over, gently press across all of the area just to pick up any excess. The reason I do this is because if you've got a sudden clump of concealer, it'll start mixing in with your shimmer when you apply it. completely ruin the look. Just stretching my lid out there just to make sure that with that deep creasing I've actually got it all. Right again clean that brush off straight away. All of my brushes get a deep clean every every week to ten days I'd say depending on how often I've used them. But cream brushes always get really really well cleaned off before I put them back away because if I want to use this again tomorrow I don't want it to be stiff and clunky and horrible if I haven't used it today. Right, starting off with the small precise BH brush
in with the lighter and again because of that creasing I am going to have to pull my lid out because I know from experience otherwise the shimmer sort of sits on top of the crease and then I get constant fallout through the day. I mean if you want to gradually get glitter freckles through the day then that's an absolute brilliant shortcut for it. But not the look I'm going for today. So I'm just gonna again I'm not swiping, I'm just pushing and lightly pressing it down because the concealer itself is slightly sticky where we've not set it. And again just for preciseness on that top edge there. And then pick up my Royal and Langnickel. I love these Royal and Langnickel brushes. They're by far probably, the, I think they're the best brushes I've ever used. Even better than my Sigma. And they're a lot cheaper than Sigma as well. I'm just like, what? Because I treated myself to a set of Sigma brushes when I hit, I think it was 100 subscribers. So excited. I was going to do a giveaway at 100 subscribers, but it was rely reliant on Adam Minto from Revolution producing a dupe of the Tarte Icy Betch palette because I was going to buy two of those, one for me to use and one for me to give away I never got around to producing it, so I just never got around to doing my giveaway I think what I'll do when I reach 1000, I will do a giveaway but that is a long way off. Right. Going in with my Royal and Langnickel into the darker shimmer. And just patting that into place. Because I can shut this eye, I don't necessarily need the smaller one to get in and be so precise. But obviously where I have to keep that eye open and I'm just kind of looking down with it, uh, it does make it a little bit easier for me if I use a slightly smaller precise brush for the top edges and the, the edge here. Right, so now I'm going to put deeper shimmer this side lighter shimmer that side and we start off by dragging the deeper one onto the lighter side and then the lighter one onto the deeper side and then just using the tip of the bristles gently buff backwards and forwards so you get a lovely soft gradient between the two Oh, I do like that look. And this is so nice after having done pastels for a couple of days. But, obviously, not everyone's going to want to do the bright and the deep colours like I normally do. So I have had questions from people about, do you ever do neutral looks? Uh, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> And you can see, because we blinked to do that, you can still actually see, when you then raise your brows, you can still see a slight amount of the shimmer just above your crease, and that's exactly what you need. Because then you shouldn't get transference up onto the matte area that you've got left. Right. I'm going to go off camera and do my foundation and everything, and I'll be back to finish off my under eyes. Okay, I'm back. Hmm. Right, I'm going to get uh, this little flat top brush. And I am... Wow, choices. Uh, I'm going to go in with... I think this grey to start with. Well, I think it's, it's grey with like a purple tinge. It's almost like a really, really deep mauve, to be honest rather than just a grey, it's a bit warmer than 
grey. And I'm just running that really tight up underneath my lash line there. Do the same this so time, just making sure it meets up with the grey on the top lid, just so we get a nice sort of seamless transition. Now obviously this is now set, because um, obviously I, I set my concealer because, oh why does it crease? Even the ones that say, we don't crease, our concealers never crease. Yeah, they, they do on me. Okay. <laughs> and then I have this little stubby brush. Again, flat top but much thicker. Uh, this came with the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to dip once into there and once into there. And use that, whoa mama, to, to buff out that lower lash line. Wow, actually, I know I whoa mamma'd, but I really quite like that. Why well, you watch me going million miles down on this eye? I end up looking like I've been punched in the face by... I always flinch this side because obviously I'm relying on my viewfinder and muscle memory because I haven't got peripheral vision and the number of times I've poked myself in the eye you would not, you probably would believe if you've watched me for any length of time you've probably seen me poke myself in the eye a number of times right uh, because this is so dark so dramatic I think I'm going to use Jeffrey's uh, Supreme Frost in Wet Dream because this has got glitter effect to it. So it just just to help lift things a tad. And this is just a really cheap flat top brush that I've got for me by years ago. So I'm going to pop that on the inner corner. I have been loving Jeffrey's Sarcophagus. That's normally the one that I use. This is similar shade to sarcophagus, but it just has some glitter in it. But unlike most glittery highlights, this glitter tends to actually stay on your face. Now, as well as doing the um, tear duct, I always come down just under the first part of my eye, just to meet whatever colours I've put on the bottom. Just because with my eye shape, I think that's the most flattering. If it doesn't work on you, just do your inner corner, babe. <sighs> Makeup's all about you. If you like it, I guess it's stuff what everybody else thinks. Oh, I'm just going to pop a bit of this up under the tail of my brow. Whoops, kind of went over the matte shadow there. Oopsie. Oh, these things happen. There we go. Just let's just pretend that never happened, okay? You didn't see it, nobody saw it, it never happened. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go off camera and do mascara and the rest of my highlighter and put my lips on. Put my lips on, put my liquid lip on. Uh, do something with my hair and I'll be back with my final thoughts. Okay, as usual I'm doing battle with my hair. I've kind of left the front bits and the fringe down and then just put the back up in this ponytail which has gone ridiculously curvy and curly on me but it's just it's way too hot in my kitchen today even without any heating on so it's a hair up day so as you can see lippy is on it's not transfer proof okay it does feel a lot more moisturising um, 
and it does say liquid cat suit high shine lipstick so it's like um almost like a mix between a it feels like a typical bullet lipstick on your lips but does have the ease of use of that applicator so that's cool I like this I'm really glad I bought this now because this is not the same as Jeffrey's Scorpio but this would be great if I was wearing Scorpio to bung over the top just to give it a bit of a Ooh, I might try that um, so what do I think of this little quad I really like it guys uh, I'm really impressed with the pigmentation blended out great um, I will try it on a set base and blending it just to see whether it it does lighten up or whether you can still get this intensity on a set base but for the time being do you know what I really like this and if Beauty Bay have still got them in stock this particular one which is Bed of Roses which makes you want to sing Bon Jovi Bed of Roses no, no, stop it, stop it um, I really like it. So if you like the colour scheme and you like the idea of a dark, grungy, mauvey, pinky kind of look, I'm running out of words, then you know, I say get it, it's not expensive uh, and I really like the result. Uh, in terms of what I used on my face, uh, today I used my Fenty foundation in 150 my Too Faced Born This Way Super Coverage Concealer in Swan Butter Bronzer in Bronzer Wet n Wild uh, Hummingbird Hype um, Blush I actually tried this, now this is meant to be they sell this as a bronzer this is Reserve Your Cabana bronzer but Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips said that she used this similar to the way you would use the ambient lighting powders from Hourglass because it has a um, like a, a sheen I don't know if this is going to show up it has like a soft sheen to it which I just dusted over the high points um, of my face and it just it just gave a slight reflection which is great because I love this Fenty but um, I'm getting to the age I'm getting to the stage now where I'm getting a lot more fine lines and matte foundations are not that great so I've been looking for something hourglass-ish but without the hourglass-ish price to just dust over and kind of like a glow from within because girl I'm still gonna have my highlight my highlight is still my, my my aesthetic is still Tin Man blinds astronauts on the moon with my highlight um, and as I said I used the Jeffrey Supreme Supreme Frost in Wet Dream for that I used the aforementioned Catrice mascara which is what got me into this mess in the first place setting spray Gerard Slay All Day in Watermelon. I have got a discount code for this. It's listed in the description box. I do earn a commission. I'm always up front about that. Entirely up to you if you use it or not, but it will save you 30%. I don't get a 30% commission. I just want to state that right now. <laughs> right. Okay. I think... Why do our tops always go lopsided? I did say that, but then Jamie from uh, Panic Antics said she has the same problem and she thinks it's because one boob is bigger than the other. And thinking about it, she could be right. Because it is the bigger boob side that slides off. So, there, there could be... The, you might have hit it there, Jamie. You never know. You, I think you might have cracked it. Anyway, that's quite enough blethering from me. I'm sure this film is long enough as it is and I'm going to have great fun editing it. Uh, girl is from the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group, listed in the description below. If you liked this, it'd be great if you check out some more of mine. And as ever, 
you know, like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, check you're still subscribed because YouTube keep on deleting people. And all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.